Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. If you're starting a business, you look around you and you see so many things are being given away free and you think, what am I going to do? Should I give away some of this stuff free? How much should I give away? And this is the eternal dilemma. How do you balance things? This is the question that I got from one of our subscribers. And he said, what's the thought process when you're giving away free versus paid content? I know your philosophy is to give away the best free content, and this gives people the quick wins, the specific steps, empowerment, and what they should not do. But I keep thinking that I'm giving away everything for free, and that's the same as my paid content. So why will the customers have any reason to buy? That was the question. Here's the answer. It's not always easy to restrict the line between paid and free content because it can be one and the same. However, there is a concept of the idea versus the system. The idea is when you're telling someone that something is important. For instance, I could say that you need to learn about sales pages. And you need to learn about sales pages not because you want to become a copywriter, but to know that you can do one of these two things. And the first thing is, You don't have to be at the mercy of someone else. You don't have to wait when you have a product or a service to sell. You can write your own sales page and you can do it whenever you choose to do so and know that you're on the right path. But should you hire someone, should you hire a copywriter, then you're not flying blind. You can audit their past work. You can see how good they are. And when you give them the assignment, you can audit it to see that they haven't missed out on anything. And that's why the sales page will work. That's why it'll sell more products or services. So that's an example where you're giving the idea and then you're selling a system. The idea is probably an article. Maybe it's a video. Maybe it's audio like this. And now that idea has been implanted. What naturally follows is the system. And what is the system? It's a course, a system, a template, a how-to on how to create or how to audit your sales page. Since we have lots of clients who run their own business, they would want to know how to write sales pages to sell their products or services, or at the very least, how to audit their sales page if they give it away. So just giving the ideas and selling the system, that's a decisive move. It creates a strong feeling in the need of the client. And that's just one example. Let's take another idea. Let's say you're not selling courses and information and all of that stuff. And let's say that you're a cafe and that you're selling coffee. You may want the clients to buy into your coffee beans. So what's the idea and what's the system? The idea is learn to control the water temperature. And when you learn how to control the water temperature, you can extract better flavor. I'm just making this up, of course, but that's an idea. Or learn how not to get bitter coffee. Now, these are ideas that I'm just thinking up as I go along. But you understand what's the premise behind all of this. The premise is that people want to improve their lives. They want to change it in some way. And you become the person that brings that idea forward. And then, of course, they need to follow through. And that's the system. And when you have system, what you have is information. How you give away that information is totally up to you. It could be through an article, it could be through a book, it could be through a video, it could be through audio. It depends on how you want to give it away and then whether you want to give it away free or if it's paid. But once you've given away the information, you've slightly changed the world of the client. She realizes that there is a better experience and she's probably missing out on that. And this in turn motivates her to be fussier about the coffee she buys and how she brews it in future. 
However, it also has a very profound side effect. You're the one that brought it up. You're the one that brought up the idea, and it causes the client to see you as an expert. After all, you're giving them the ideas, so you must know what you're doing. The ideas versus system is one model, and there is a different kind of model. When I first started in marketing, I was pretty enamored with the ideas versus system. You could blame my reluctance that I didn't know very much, and so giving away even a little was problematic. So I thought, okay, I'll just give away the ideas, and then after that, I'll get them to buy the system. I was very rigid with that kind of thinking. And I suppose when you don't have that much information, or haven't progressed enough in your business, then you go, wait, all of this is exactly the same. And here's what I found out. I found out that you can't actually give away enough because people still come back. In essence, I got lucky because I had the chance to test out this theory very quickly. At that time, many small business groups would meet once a week around Auckland, which is the city I live in. And I'd show up at 7 o'clock or 5 p.m. or 8 p.m., whatever time I had to speak. And these hours were all around the place, and people would sometimes be alert and sometimes would be sleepy. However, what was consistent was how they reacted. I talked to them about my book, which is The Brain Audit. And The Brain Audit, as you probably know, has seven steps. And I'd spend about 45 minutes on the first three steps. I'd explain all of that in detail. The audience, on the other hand, always wanted to know what are the other four steps. So I've given them three steps out of those seven steps, and then there are four steps left, and I would hold it back. But they wanted to know what are the seven steps. Everybody would want to know what are the seven steps. You're saying seven steps, you're giving me three steps. What happens to the other four steps? Faced with this constant objection, I decided, okay, I'm just going to give away all the seven steps as a list and then proceed to explain the first three steps in detail. That's what 45 minutes will allow me. When I followed the second system, I found more people were buying into the book or buying the book instead. One of those early meetings was at Rotorua, which is about four hours from our home. And I sold 35 copies of The Brain Audit and there were just 50 people in the room. Back then, selling a book in PDF format was one of the weirdest things ever. People didn't have email addresses, not everyone did, and so we'd have to put it on a CD so that they could read the book. You have to remember that people just got physical books that they could thumb through and mark and underline and do all of that stuff. So PDF was really strange, and to get so many people to read the book, Yes, there was a good presentation, but also because they felt empowered, they knew the destination, they knew all the steps, and then it was a matter of them digging into it and then going over it repeatedly so that it could help their business. And now, almost 20 years later, we have learned that there is no such thing as giving away too much. That spindly version of the brain audit became more detailed and the book became a lot thicker. Since then, we've had workshops in New Zealand, USA, Europe, and I'll tell you why I'm rambling through all of this. Clients who attended our workshops had already bought the Brain Audit. Now, you'd have thought that only new clients would attend the workshop. Instead, it was the existing clients. In all the workshops that we've had, maybe one random client would show up, someone who had not read the Brain Audit, and of course, we'd get them to read the Brain Audit in advance, but 95% of the people who attended the seminar were existing clients. They had already read the Brain Audit. Maybe they had even bought into something related to the Brain Audit. And the story should stop there, but it doesn't. People have bought into various versions of the Brain Audit. And now we are in 2021. We announced that we are having a webinar series on the Brain Audit. Who were the ones that signed up? You made an accurate guess. Existing clients will keep coming back as long as you show them better ways to use your product. In our case, we are refining the concepts of the Brain Audit. 
And if you want to think of it as a day-to-day -day event, think of it as beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And that's the whole point, that you can have a single product, you can have a single idea, you can have a single system, and you can take a client through the advanced, sorry, through the basic, the intermediate, and the advanced, and they will keep following you through the whole procedure. Now, this is an example of a single product, and we have many products. And you take this over several products in 20 years, and what you have is a gold mine. A lot of this depends on you, however. At Psychotactics, we tend to treat our information like Photoshop, which is to say, we treat our whole business and all the products as if they are versions that are continuously being improved. Photoshop, not coincidentally, has also existed for over 20 years. And the reason that they continue to exist is because of the versions. Every version allows the same client to do things in a better, faster, more productive manner. It also brings in new clients, which is a definite bonus. And many, if not most of the clients, go through the same buying cycle. So clients will buy the copy of the Brain Audit, which is priced at under $10, but then purchase other add-ons of the Brain Audit, like the webinar series, for example. So if you have additional products or services, the purchase cycle doesn't stop at one product. Clients will routinely buy products that are first lower priced, like we have chaos planning or outlining or storytelling. And then once they're convinced that they're getting precise results, they move on to the higher priced products, such as the sales page course, pre-sell, or the article writing course. And then to make a leap, they will also do courses like the cartooning course, which has nothing to do with marketing or the brain audit for that matter. If you ask yourself, how powerful is the idea of giving ideas and systems? And it seems to be almost limitless in the way it works. Giving away something has always been a superpower. Giving away the idea and selling the system is about teaching a person to fish and then selling them the fishing equipment too. They're happy and you're glad as well. And there's a little downside in giving away more than just the idea. If anything, giving away part of the system itself has proven to be more delightful and more profitable for us. And if you keep refining your work, keep making versions of it, treating it like software, then you will find that people will come back for the same system because now it's better, now it's more productive. That's the reason why people come back because I bought version one and now it's version two and then version 2.3. People keep coming back for the same system. And the versions don't even have to be in the same format. You can have training, you can have consulting, you can have workshops, you can have all sorts of things. And like I've already mentioned twice before, The Brain Audit, which was a book, is now a webinar series as well. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. So what did we cover in this podcast? Well, the first thing is that the ideas versus system is already a pretty profound methodology to go about things, where you give the client an idea on maybe how to write better headlines, and then after that, you sell them a system, which is a headline training or a headline course or, I don't know, headline consulting, whatever it is that you're doing. The same thing applies for products. You show someone how to use the product in a better way, then they buy more of that product or they decide to buy a superior version of that product. Information becomes that tool where you're empowering that client, you're giving them the ideas and they realize there's a different world out there and then they want to buy into that world. So that's the idea and then that's the system. But what we found is that even when you give away the whole system, what you have is upgrades and clients buy into the upgrades, but they also buy into the different ways in which you're distributing that system. Theoretically, you could write an article, but then the article becomes a workshop, the article becomes a webinar, it becomes anything. And that just spirals for you in a good way, not a bad way. Spiral is not the right word to use here, but spiral it is.
We are always afraid that once we give away our information, there's nothing left. But you'll find that clients have questions and counter questions and a single idea can become a book, a series, so many other things. You have to let go and allow that somehow this whole thing will fall in place because it does fall in place. It's fallen in place thousands of times over and over again. So that's it. You've got the ideas and the system. And let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics land. Pre-sale is not exactly an unknown to us. As I'm recording this podcast, the America's Cup, which is the big sailing regatta, is going on in Auckland. Well, there are tens of thousands of people who have descended on Auckland. The hotels are booked out for weeks. All the restaurants are full. And how did all of that happen? It didn't happen because you just put up a sales page yesterday and said, hey, wait, here's the America's Cup in the Auckland Harbor. Be there today. No. What's happened is pre-sale. All of that has had this kind of, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And of course, eventually the, the date arrives. And this pre-sale happens for birthdays and for weddings and for pretty much anything you can think of. And the moment we go online and the moment we've got a sales page, we think, oh, wait, we have a sales page. So everything should be fine. The sales page is crucial, just like the event is crucial. But you've got to pre-sell it in advance. And what we tend to do is we look around us and we see all of these people bombarding us with email after email after email after email or running this campaign and then tracking us through the internet and it pops up everywhere. You don't have to do that. You'll never see that with Psychotactics, for instance. You don't see any ad campaign. You don't see a million emails. You probably get one or two emails and you're done. And the reason for that is how you pre-sell. So understanding that is what the pre-sell course is all about. Where you can do it in an elegant way. You can do it in a non-intrusive way. And you can do it in a way that gets clients to sign up very quickly. Most of our courses sell out in 24 hours, sometimes in a couple of hours, sometimes in 20 minutes. And it's without all of this nonsense. So if you'd like to know how to do it, then go to psychotactics.com slash presell. You have to be on the waiting list if you want to buy the product. But even if you don't want to buy the product or can't buy it right now, well, you'll get some goodies and that'll help you. The address is pretty simple. It's psychotactics.com slash presell. That's pretty much it. So I'll say bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? You know, we were talking about the versions, and I used to be a big fan of Mad Magazine. Now, you may not know this, but Mad Magazine was banned because they used to come out in a comic book format, and they had all these funny things. But the censors at that point in time, and this is probably around the 1960s, the censors decided that it was too bad. It was not suitable for kids. And to be allowed to do what they wanted to do in the magazine, which is like pretty tame when you look at it, they had to make it a magazine. They had to go from a comic book to a magazine. And that's why it's called Mad Magazine. Anyway, What I started to do was start to read the magazines and then they would bring a digest and then they would clump all the digests together and make this massive book. I remember the cover, it was like just yellow with mad written on it. And they would continue to make all of these different versions of something that I'd probably read in the past before, but I had to have it all. And one of the things that I really missed when I was leaving India was leaving all of these mad magazines behind it. I'd already brought 200 kilos, that's about 400 pounds, worth of books to New Zealand. And these were the books that I considered critical. So they were design books and books that are pretty expensive. And I couldn't bring the bad magazines along. But that's an example of how you can kind of give away the whole system and then repackage it over and over again in different formats. And clients will still buy it because they love it. So just do a good job of what you're doing and then improve it. Bring out those versions and you'll see the clients stick with you pretty much forever. As you can see, I answer questions. So if you have questions, email me at shawnessychotactics.com. doesn't matter if you bought anything or not bought anything. You're a member of 5000 BC or not. 
email me and I answer everything like I've done for the last 20, 21 years. So that's Sean at Psychotactics. Send me your questions. I'll say bye for now and we'll see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye.